Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. Uh, check day two. So today we're going to be just checking the same land line that we checked yesterday. Uh, I didn't add any sets, so we got 36 sets to check, uh, 12 coyote traps, and 24 raccoon sets. Hopefully not skunks today, hopefully raccoons. Uh, again, it was cold. You know, it hardly got above freezing yesterday all day. It's 20 degrees right now. Everything's kind of hard and crunchy, which is good for landline trapping, but not good for water trapping here. So uh, last night I got, you know, piled in all my muskrat stuff. I got poles. I got, I don't know, five dozen uh, one and a half, you know, to make pole sets out of and probably at least five dozen uh, one tens, you know, that I'll make pole sets out of as well. Uh, I got all that loaded up. So things gonna be, if there's ice in the sloughs, I'm not gonna put sets there because it's not gonna get above freezing at all today the way they're talking and tomorrow as well. So there's gonna be like 48 hours of below freezing temperature. So if there's ice around the edges of a slough already. I'm not even gonna put sets in there because they're gonna be froze up. Um, they may stay open for a little while today. It's supposed to be sunny today, which might help some, but like I said, if it's going to be frozen around the edges already this morning, um, probably not putting sets in there. So it may be just bigger sloughs that hopefully won't be froze up. Um, if there's no ice, we're going to be piling sets out. I'm hoping to get like a hundred muskrat sets out. Um, and that's it. That'll be roughly 50 spots. Cause like I said, I'm going to, most of the time I'm going to be running double sets, so one foothold, one conibear right next to each other. That's kind of what I've been doing the last few years. So if I ain't get 100 muskrat sets out today, I think that would be a good day. I do have one beaver set I want to get out today. Um, and I do have that sioux where the otter have been in the last couple seasons. Um, I haven't seen no sign that they're in there this year. But I want to put a couple uh, pocket sets in there and... Uh, on drowning rigs, you know, with some like uh, Bridger number fives in there or whatever for them. We'll see that's towards the end of my line and that'll actually be at the end of all my land line. So once I get to that point, I'll know uh, how much time I have because I won't have any more sets to check. Then it'll just be all time to put sets out. So um, yeah, uh, before I get to putting any water line out, I'll probably have half of my land line checked by then. So again, I can kind of gauge how much time I have based off of that as I go, you know, the first, once I start putting water sets, I'll probably get, I don't know, 40 sets in between one land spot and the next spot I got traps, you know, so it's a good chunk of my water line already out. It'll be right in the middle of the day here. And then it'll be kind of a stretch again of land traps. And then I'll be down, I think, the second stretch of land traps, I only have a half a dozen land traps left after that. So like I said, then I can really gauge how much time I have. It's going to be kind of slow going I did today, I think, with it being this cold. My hands are going to be freezing just trying to get these sets all out, but we're going to get going. Uh, sun isn't even up yet, but I can see plenty good to start checking traps. So like I said, we're going to get, it, get out there early. Hopefully, again, like I said, there's not ice on these sloughs. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, so it may only be a day or two here of checking water traps if I can even get them out today. So, cause like I said, the next like, well, basically 36 hours, 48 hours from right now, two days. So by two days from now on Monday morning, you know, I imagine most of the sous will probably be froze. Some of the small sous for sure will be froze up. So I may only get one, maybe two checks out of you know, out of some of these sous, even if I can get the sets out, so. But we're gonna do it, like I said, cause short season for me, we might as well try and pile up any kind of fur I can get caught. So um, once I get the water line out, like the next, you know, tomorrow I'll be checking the whole thing, probably on Monday, whether I'm pulling some sets or not. Now, I, then I think the stuff's freezing up already. Like I said, it's hard and crunchy this morning. There's frost on the ground. Um, I should be able to start driving across a few more of these slough, or, uh, fields and I'll be able to get a little better coyote line out hopefully. Raccoon line is probably about what it's going to be. I don't think I'll be putting out too many more raccoon sets. Um, <clears throat> I kind of hit all the big spots already. So, All right, 
let's get out there, see what we got, and see if we can get some water line out. All right, guys, so we're uh, poking our way through the line here. Uh, we're actually doing very good on uh, getting muskrat sets out. Um, there's ice and quite a bit of it. I'm gonna show you a little bit what I got going on. So we got just uh, three coyote traps and uh, one raccoon set to check. Otherwise we got the entire line checked. Um, I would say I'm about in the middle of my muskrat line. Um, I, I got some sets right here. I'm gonna put a couple more sets in this slough here. Um, and then like I said, we're gonna hit some bigger, bigger sloughs as we're coming up here that hopefully won't be froze over. But we're just gonna give you a little rundown. So this is a pretty good size slough. It's a hundred yards over to that side, if not more. And it goes down and around the corner down here. We're gonna put the muskrat hut right here. But down around the end down here, we're gonna put a couple more sets. I'm actually gonna put two sets right over here and two sets kind of over in this corner. There's a culvert right here and I have sets in that culvert already. But what I'm dealing with, so I normally catch some on this side of the road behind me, but I normally do the best on this side of the road. And there's a big muskrat hut right over here, another one right over there. There's all kinds of bubbles under the ice, but this side is completely froze over. Um, other than just a little bit right here by this culvert, so I did drop a couple sets in, but there's a lot of places where one side or the other of the road is froze over or mostly froze over. And like I said, it's not even, it's not above freezing right now, I'm pretty sure of that. And I don't think it's supposed to get above freezing tomorrow either, so. And my sun didn't shine today. So if there's already ice, it's gonna be just completely froze over overnight here. Unless the wind picks up a little bit, and that might be my only saving grace, is if I keep a little bit of wind, that just will kind of dampen the ice a little bit, but. I mean, even in this bigger one right here, I don't know how well you can see it here, but right here, this kind of calmer looking spot, that's all ice right there. So, sorry about the truck going by. I probably shouldn't be filming right here on this road, but. So yeah, like I said, it's been a tough, tough go. There's maybe a third of my slews I didn't even put sets out in at all because they're iced over or have a fair amount of ice. I got probably another third that I probably shouldn't have because there was some ice already around the edges. You know, I had to walk through ice to get out to some open water. Uh, I'm talking like 10 feet maybe of ice along the shore. I maybe shouldn't have put sets there, but we're gonna give it a go. If they're in the open water, at least going into the night here, there's a chance I catch some muskrats in them. So, um, and I don't know like if there is ice around them, if the muskrats will push through the ice a little bit to get over to them, but. So yeah, like I said, I don't know exact number, but I think I'm right about 50 uh, muskrat sets out now. So not doing too bad. I hope to get 50 more in. I don't know if I have that many spots actually to get 50 more in, just depending on again, what's froze, what's not. So um, yeah, sorry about no catches today. Like I said, we're uh, plugging through the muskrat line. So we should have some muskrat catches. I just don't know how many tomorrow, but. Like I said, we're gonna drop four more sets right here, go down to the other end of the slough and drop two more down there. And we'll be on to the next slough. I probably got 15 sloughs to do that too. So, and like I said, we'll just kind of hope that they're not iced over already, but it is what it is. I'm kind of risking busting ice all day tomorrow, putting sets in today, but I have a little ice breaker made. I'll show you that tomorrow probably. Um, so I can get through the ice to get to my sets anyway. Well, boys and girls, I hope you can hear that. I thought there was a chance I might get skunked today. We're down to the last two traps. I got one more, the one, uh, it's over the hill over here that I had the raccoon pulled out the last set of the day yesterday. And I have one again on this side of the hill. So we got, you know, that bigger slough is right over here with some of these trees. We got a big chunk of wildlife over here and another slough kind of behind my truck here. I don't know why I'm hiding, but trying to get out of the wind for you. But there's this bigger slough and a chunk of CRP grass on the edge. And I've seen it after it snowed a few years ago, the coyote come out across right here on the edge. Wow, that's loud. 
and then he went went up along the fence line up here so i thought well we'll put a set here and i think in like the three years i've had it here i think i've caught a coyote here every year so boy i hope you guys can hear that because it is loud uh yesterday right up here is that feed lot so yesterday up there is where i had the coyote caught so but yeah, so I just had a dirt hole set. This rock was my backer here, just kind of set up. Um, while I was digging my trap bed, I actually run into my stake from last year, which kind of surprised me. But so I literally, it's in the exact same spot as it was last year, so. That is loud. Wow. So yeah, didn't get skunked today. Uh, which is surprising. It's surprised I had as good a day yesterday as I did. So, so yeah, like I said, I got a nice coyote. Looks like it's very well furred. The hackle, it's got a cool hackle on him. Like, see how it like goes all the way down the back of his leg? It just kind of looks odd, but he's not really dirty the way he looks either because he's caught on the grass here. So. Well, we're gonna get this one, uh, this guy out of here and the set remade. We're gonna try and maybe put some muskrat sets here and then we're gonna put some in this bigger slough and I got the one set over there. So I'm gonna try and put an otter or two set, one or two otter sets in this uh, bigger slough over here. So I don't know if they're in there or not. We're gonna walk in the in there and put some muskrat sets anyway. So. We're gonna kind of scope out to see if it looks like there's any otter sign in there and probably trying to make a couple pocket sets so uh, it's fairly early it's like one o'clock in the afternoon and i got 60 plus muskrat sets out uh i put seven out since i had you guys on or no nine out since i had you guys on so all right i'm tired of listening to this guy he is loud loud i've had him bark but man he's going crazy no wonder you can hear him you know, when you're deer hunting or whatever for so far. Man, I imagine you could hear him for a couple miles, but. All right, we'll get him out of there. We're gonna keep pounding in muskrat sets. We're not skunk for the day. And we'll give you a kind of a rundown once I get home, kind of where we ended up at the day at, so. Now I'm getting really frustrated and mad. I don't understand what's going on here. Um, definitely gonna have to change things up a little bit, but. I'm by the, my last set of the day, so I got this big slew kind of down on the corner down here is where uh, I believe the otters were staying, but the beaver house is completely collapsed in. There's no runs going in out of the bank. There's no toilet. There's nothing down there. There is a, the second beaver house is right in here where I caught the beaver last year out of here. And I haven't been out here yet because when I come around the corner, I could see this. This is the same set that I had the raccoon pulled out of yesterday. I had something, I don't want to say bigger, but the catch circle is way bigger. Yesterday it was only maybe out to here. Right here is the center of my trap. So I don't know if I had a raccoon back foot caught here or a coyote caught and he got pulled out because he's scratching way out to here. You know, way out this far out. I, I didn't investigate nothing yet. I just turned you guys on. Well, there's a toenail right here. So I don't know if I had, if it's a coyote toenail or a raccoon toenail, but I don't know what we're, we're gonna swap that trap out. So yesterday it was a little pebble in there Today it looks like I maybe just had him toe caught. I don't know. I we talked a little bit about it yesterday. If I, I have like one of these happen a year for me, and now they have it two days in a row in the exact same trap, same set, it's just frustrating as heck. So like I said, we're gonna swap this trap completely out. Um, but yeah, that's the last trap of the day. So we ended up with just the one coyote. Um, I see I've put eight raccoons or eight muskrat sets out here so far and I'm gonna drop two more right out here for sure. And then we'll come back and we'll 
get this guy remade. Like I said, we're gonna pull that trap out of there. We'll put a brand new queen trap in there now. Um, I don't know if it's the way the trap is tuned. Just happened to catch raccoons and the one chewed and pulled out yesterday. Toe caught today. It's just frustrating. Like I said, we, you know, I'm running such a short wine. You know, I only got 12 coyote sets out, you know, so I need, if, I, if something sets it off, I need it to be waiting for me when I get there, so. And I don't want to be hurting the animals and them getting away either, so. It's just frustrating. Like I said, we'll, we'll make her back up here the best I can. Yeah. But yeah, one coyote for today. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm just kind of frustrated by that whole situation, but. We're gonna drop, like I said, two more muskrats here. There is a slough up over here towards these trees. We're gonna drop probably four sets over there, I think. Um, and we'll just keep moving on. Couple sloughs between when I turned you on before the coyote and uh, the coyote. You know, a couple of the sloughs are froze over that I normally make, you know, a fair amount of muskrat catches in, but they are froze over already. So again, that's just what it is, so. This one here behind me, it's pr pretty much open. There was just a skim of ice on the, up in the weeds, but once you got out in the open part of the sewer, it was open. So I'm hoping maybe to get two or three checks out of these. If I get two checks out of any of them, I'm gonna be happy with that. And you know, probably ain't gonna catch 50 muskrats this season, but we're gonna make a good run at it. You never know, I could have 25, 30 tomorrow. With, with it being cold, if my sets don't freeze in before the muskrats move, um, I have seen a few muskrats swimming around while I've been making sets, so I don't like them watching me make the set, but maybe that might get them curious to come over there and check it out too, so. All right, enough babbling. We'll get this set remade. We'll get some muskrat sets out here. Uh, probably the next time I turn you on is gonna be uh, when I get home, so. Well, like I said, we got probably hopefully maybe 30 more muskrat sets I can get in today, and I'm gonna get one beaver set we're gonna walk out here. I'm not gonna put an otter set by that north beaver house like I had planned on. We're gonna check this beaver house and see if it's worth the otter set or not. Like I said, there was zero sign, like no weeds knocked down on the bank, no toilet, just no sign that they were even there. So um, being the beaver house was caved in, you know, they got no place to stay there now. So, cause that's why they were there last year is cause there was a beaver house up there, abandoned beaver house and they were up in that. Well, if it's caved in, they ain't gonna be in there, so. All right, like I said, we'll probably see you guys at home. Well, everyone made her home finally. I'm down by, we call this my trapping shed. This is where I store all my uh, traps. Uh, we're gonna unload a few things here. Um, some things I'm not gonna need. I got some 330s in my truck I'm not gonna need. Um, some H stands in there for those I don't I'm not gonna need so we're gonna take them out of there um, I don't remember exactly there's 11 one and a halfs in here do they look like all Dukes but I use a variety of one and a halfs and the Hags bracket and then I use pole sets um, I believe I had 50 in here and I'm down to 11 <clears throat> So I, but that doesn't seem right to me either. Cause so that'd be 39 sets. And if I got 39 of these out, I got 39 uh, conner bears out, 110s. But like I said, that doesn't seem right to me. I feel like I have more than that out. I feel like I got real close to a hundred. So I'm not sure if I had 60 and 60 or 60 and then I don't know how many conner bears, but if I had 60, that means I got 49 footholds out and 49 because I've been doing two of every set. Um, I did also put out one raccoon set. Uh, it looked like a nice trail coming out of a culvert by one of the sloughs. Uh, I literally walked out to put my sets when I turn around I'm like oh look at that beautiful trail coming out of the culvert. So I put a 160 in front of that and then I found two spots where it kind of looked like mink trails crossing the road from one slough to another. You know kind of little tunnels going through the you know, they weren't very wide, they're only like this wide. So I put a 110 in front of each one. You know, if a mink hits it, I should kill the mink, but if something bigger than that hits it, they'll just pull right out of my 110. So, and I made sure they were staked down good. So again, if something bigger gets caught, they can pull right out. But 
So yeah, long day on the line. It's, it's actually a little earlier than I thought I'd be done, but as you can see, I'm down to, these are six foot poles, and I did use a few of those. I used uh, just four of them maybe. These are five footers, and this, I got one four footer left. So as I was kinda, I got probably, there was two more slews that I maybe could have dropped. Uh, well, I don't know, in the one set I maybe would have dropped you know, two, two on one side of the slew and then two and two on the other side. So eight sets there. Um, and then there was one more slew I went by, a guy could have put four sets in. You know, it had been two on each kind of end of the slew on, and it's only on one side of the road. So guy could have got a few more out. Oh, the sun's gonna shine finally. The sun has not shined all day. It's been kind of cloudy, not terribly breezy, which is nice. Um, so kind of a fun fact, I kind of ended up where I started my muskrat line. So I did a, a check on them. Uh, one foothold was set off, so I re reset it. I just made sure that, you know, I tried to get them somewhat hair trigger, but I actually pushed it back all the way back. So, you know, I still feel like it will catch the muskrat if they step on it. Um, but there was ice around the edge of that, like 10 foot of ice and I busted some ice to walk out and put my sets out there, kind of like, ah, should I be doing that? You know, cause it's, again, it's gonna freeze up solid again tonight. So I'm like, oh, should I be doing that? You know, they're just gonna freeze in solid before anything can get caught. The ice had actually melted back away, back up closer to the cattails away from my set. So now they're kind of stupidly out 10 feet or more beyond the ice, but. So, all that means, I guess, is most of my sets should still be working, at least for quite a while going in the evening here. Uh, like I said, I actually have seen some muskrats swimming around today while I've been running. So, I mean, that's good things, you know, gives me some hope for tomorrow. I did get one beaver set out. Um, I put a caster mount and put a uh, Duke number five, or a Bridger number five in front of it on a drowning wire. Um, Again, that, that's the only beaver I know where it is that I can easily trap. Um, I have one more single beaver, I think, and I think he's gonna freeze out because he's got no feed bed or anything, but um, I didn't really, really want to drive across. I gotta drive a mile back there just to trap the one beaver I think is in there. So I did, I didn't, I'm not gonna waste my time. Um, I, like I said, I have a few other sous I could put some muskrat sets in. Um, we'll kind of see how tomorrow goes. I'm going to kind of consolidate these two tubs. So I'm going to move a, a few of these conner bears into this tub. Um, basically, I want to leave one of these tubs because if some sets are iced in tomorrow, I'm going to pull them and I want to have a tub so I can have a tub to throw them in is what it amounts to. Uh, what I'm also going to throw in is an empty milk crate. Uh, I throw all my muskrats as I catch them in a milk crate being open it kind of lets the air blow over them and it actually dries them off a little bit as you're driving around they're probably going to freeze tomorrow anyway so i mean that's not ideal but it is what it is um but yeah oh, successful day on the line it, it's tough as you know setting the first day went and the last two checks have been you know just with the three dozen sets i got out you know catching three of these guys already in two checks and I only got 12 coyote traps out. So, I mean, I do have them in some of the better spots where I typically make coyote catches, but still the catch three in two days here, you know, again, I'm only running a dozen checks. So I was hoping to catch about a dozen coyotes in my dozen checks. So, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking after tomorrow, we're gonna run my line exactly how it is. I don't think we'll be adding any sets unless I add a few muskrat sets to a few of these slews right at the end. Cause like I said, I'm gonna throw a few extra poles in. Um, and again, I'll probably be pulling a few sets anyway. So I'll have some extra gear for that. But tomorrow, probably not adding any, any sets. And again, it'd be right at the end of my line. If I got time, I'll add them. Um, otherwise it's just gonna be a straight run on Monday, we'll kind of see what the weather does here and if how many sets I end up pulling tomorrow and kind of how I am going on the line tomorrow as far as ones being frozen. And then we'll see on the line on Monday, I'm gonna try 
probably try to get a few more coyote sets out. The ground I think is going to be hardening up as we go along here, so I should be able to drive around a little bit. Not even so much drive around, but on some of the fields I may actually be able to walk out to sets. Where two days ago it really was just slime when I was walking around trying to put coyote sets out. So, and also the dirt's kind of freeze drying, so I actually will have a little dirt to sift, which will be nice. Sifting mud doesn't work. So, but yeah, we'll just go over my one catch for the day, like I said. And unfortunately, I had that pull out again. And this this is the trap I pull. I ended up pulling it. I hope you guys can see. There's a toenail right there. You know, it's right right here's a toenail it looks like raccoon the whole set just stunk like raccoon and there was raccoon poop there again so I'm pretty sure I lost a second raccoon in two days in that set I'm bummed about it, it kind of makes me mad so I put a brand new queen trap in there I made sure it was bedded as solid as I could I don't know why like you said if this one's a little hair trigger or something that it was toe catching them and that's allowing them to pull out I don't know but anyway uh yeah the one coyote actually pretty well furred i'm actually surprised and it's got a really interesting hackle to me so the hackle seems like it really goes down around the side and like almost like down part of the leg you know and i i don't know it just looked weird when i was uh standing there before i uh when i was videoing him with you guys so nice coyote we'll get him all the birds picked out of him and we'll get him skinned and uh put my freezer tonight and then we're gonna take a break because I am tired and I am getting sore already so like I said we're just gonna shift a little bit of gear around you know throw some stuff out um, more than anything just throw some stuff out so I have some room for tomorrow and <sighs> otherwise I think we'll see you guys out on the line tomorrow have a good one